Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at this uh, webinar about our masters in law and finance. I would welcome you uh, all over the world. Nice that you have uh, uh, that you're a participant in this uh, webinar. My name is uh, Mark Sanemon. I'm the dean of the Amsterdam Business School and also the one of the program directors of this program. And this is my colleague uh, Nick de Boer. Nick is a uh, professor also at the uh, University of Amsterdam in the law school. And he's also uh, co-directing this program. And uh, yeah, we have one person from the business school, finance and economics, and one person from the law school co-directing this program, which is also a combination in itself of law and finance. Um, what are we going to discuss uh, today during the webinar? And please feel free to ask your questions. Um, if you have questions, we uh, will try to answer them. Probably we cannot answer all your questions. If we cannot answer your questions during the webinar, we will do it afterwards per email or in another way. Um, we will start out uh, telling a little bit about why we have started this program. And uh, then also for whom is this program? Um, a brief introduction of the curriculum. We will discuss the topics of the curriculum. We'll discuss also how we communicate with you uh, after that you have uh, registered for the program, either to receive information or to register to become participant in the program. We'll discuss how we'll communicate from then on. Uh, we'll discuss the admission requirements and the admission procedure. And then afterwards, there will also be time for uh, your questions. Um, Now, the reasons to uh, start this program, uh, one of the reasons is uh, that people from the industry are asking for this kind of programs. Uh, a Dutch partner of a London-based uh, 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 company, um, he said, I'm based in London and responsible for the Benelux region. In our transactions, the M&A transactions, I prefer to work with UK lawyers who understand finance much better than most Dutch or Belgian lawyers. And uh, that person was saying that because uh, in, in the UK, uh, some lawyers can have a bachelor in, uh, for instance, economics or finance and a master's in law. And in this way, they are much better educated in finance and economics and they understand better the commercial transactions. Now, we also became aware uh, a couple of years ago about a survey that was held by uh, Harvard, Harvard Law School, and they asked their alumni which classes you, you take in your study, or which, uh, from which classes do you regret that you didn't have taken them. And at uh, number one, at rank one and rank two, there was accounting and financial reporting and corporate finance. So these people were saying, we are really missing this, uh, uh, these classes in our program. Now, then there was also uh, a whole conversation in the newspaper, uh, in the Financial Dagblad, NRC, about uh, uh, that lawyers should be educated more broadly. And uh, that uh, discussion was from the managing partners of the big law firms and also uh, some in-house counsels were involved and they agreed that uh, lawyers would be more valuable in those companies and in those law firms if they were educated more broadly. Now, my own story, I was for about 10 years in the board of a big law firm. And uh, at some point in time, we had an uh, offsite with the whole office, uh, all the lawyers in the office. And uh, we discussed how we could improve uh, our knowledge about business because it was felt in the, in the uh, law firm that uh, it was, was very useful to have this uh, knowledge. And uh, I started a program then, a two-week program for lawyers, uh, educating them in a business school about the basics of finance and law um, and, uh, and business. But they were saying it's a very useful program uh, and we learned a lot, but two weeks is too short, in fact. We need to know more about this topic and that's also one of the reasons that we started uh, a couple of years ago to think about this program. And we are very happy that uh, in September the program will start. Um, now, for whom is this program intended? Um, 
It is intended for people that want to become a T-shaped lawyer. That is a lawyer with deep legal knowledge. Um, it's a program taught at law school and at the business school and brought financial and business knowledge. So the T-shaped lawyer is asked by many companies and law firms uh, these days. And uh, this is the type of student that we want to educate. And these are, will be our graduates. Um, if you look to uh, job opportunities, uh, we have studied a lot uh, the job opportunities for those people because uh, we know that uh, it's a very important variable in the choice of students, uh, labor market perspectives. And we uh, did our own research and we also looked on the websites, uh, for instance, at Glassdoor and at LinkedIn, how many positions are available. And we found out that uh, today, only in the Amsterdam area, there are about 100 vacancies looking for people that have this combination of finance and uh, uh, law. And uh, yeah, so the labor market perspectives are very favorable for uh, people with this study. Mm. <coughs> now, which jobs can you then choose? Um, of course, you can choose jobs uh, in the legal industry. Um, if you do this search, uh, you will find many uh, companies from the legal industry asking for people with this combination of backgrounds, or uh, you could also work outside the legal industry. And uh, to the, or, um, it is well known that uh, during the past few years, it becomes more and more difficult for people with a legal background to find jobs outside the legal industry. And this is also a study that you could take if you also want to be flexible and want to be able to take a job outside of the legal industry. For instance, if you want to become a management consultant, uh, a trainee in, an, in, a, in a company, or a bank or investor. And of course, the, also the legal, within the legal industry, you could become a lawyer or you could have another law-related uh, job. Now, the, gra the graduates of this program, uh, we think, will have clear advantages in the labor market. Uh, of course, you have this nice combination of uh, law and finance, so you are educated in both areas, which is a clear advantage, as I said before. Um, you will also be recognized by companies as a top talent because this program is a selective program and we select for the top talent. And of course, companies are interested <coughs> very much in top talent. Um, people are more broader educated and more flexible. Remember the T-shaped lawyer, the deep legal knowledge and the broad financial knowledge. Um, of course, you will, get, uh, um, uh, you will get access to the Dutch bar. The Seville effect uh, will apply. Uh, the job opportunities, as I said, will be uh, large. And of course, the study takes place in Amsterdam. And in Amsterdam, um, you're in close proximity of many uh, employers, which is also a clear advantage. If you want to work on, an, uh, for instance, thesis project or internship or a job afterwards. Now then the curriculum. Uh, we didn't make the curriculum only ourselves. We also looked outside. We involved people from the industry. This is our advisory board and our advisory board advised us on how to compose the curriculum that is both from an academic point of view as from a business point of view, a very interesting and useful curriculum. Um, the courses, um, I will go now uh, briefly through the first semester. Block one will be the introductory courses, so you will get an introduction in finance and accounting, an introduction into economics, an introduction into mathematics, uh, business mathematics. Block two will be about the foundations of finance, governance and financial markets. Block three will be about the EU, the monetary system, and also there will be a start of the thesis in block number three. So you will think here, you will get the time to think about, um, um, yeah, about which topic you are going to write your uh, thesis. Um, probably, let's see whether there, there are some questions also about, uh, uh, probably one is what are the criteria for selection of talent? That's a very important one. 
but uh, Nick will also come back to that one. Yeah. Uh, so later during the presentation, we'll answer uh, uh, this question as well. Um, I wonder if we can receive the sheets of this webinar. I believe that they will be published on the website. Uh, so we'll do that, uh, or at least a summary of them. Um, now, then I will proceed um, uh, with uh, semester two. Block four will be on banking and advanced finance topics. Um, block five on risk and insolvency. And block six will be devoted to your thesis project. And uh, yeah, that completes the total program. Um, yeah, we, we didn't touch up on uh, uh, one important uh, uh, topic, and that is that we have also a longer experience in the combination of law mm -hmm. and finance. Mm -hmm. Since many years, we have in Amsterdam the Amsterdam Center for Law and Economics, uh, founded by uh, Arnoud Boot, a well-known economist, and uh, we are doing research since a very long time on uh, the intersection between law finance and economics in that center. And we got from that center also input for our curriculum. There's a close link between the content of the curriculum and the research that we are doing in this institute. And also um, the uh, uh, institute provides the opportunity, once you have graduated, to become a researcher. Since we have this research institute, the research institute is always looking for good PhD students. So in, if you want to proceed as a researcher in this area, there will also be opportunities in this center for law and economics. Nick. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark, for this uh, really exciting story, I think. Um, so a key question for you would, of course, be how can you stay informed about the LLM and law and finance? Uh, and we have various channels for uh, communication by which you can stay informed, um, which you can see here on the slide. The, the first one is our website. Uh, the, um, the URL is uh, right here. Uh, in addition to that, we have a newsletter. Uh, and you will receive that newsletter if you sign up for a program through the website. You can also sign up separately for the newsletter. Uh, and you can find that information um, on the website. In addition to that, we have a Facebook group. So a Facebook group, we also regularly share updates uh, about the program uh, and all related information related also to the content of the program. Um, and should that not be sufficient, you can always uh, ask, a, ask a question that can be done uh, here uh, in this uh, webinar it's, uh, itself. Uh, or you can also email us later at uh, lawfinancefdr@uva.nl, at uva.nl and um, I answer all uh, questions personally and uh, usually get back to you very, very quickly. Um, so I'd like to say as well that uh, signing up for the newsletter is really crucial because this really provides you with all relevant uh, information about uh, all the aspects of the program. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, we already saw a question uh, before on admission. So how can you be admitted to uh, this master? Um, well, first the requirements. The requirements is that uh, you first have a bachelor in law or at least uh, a bachelor degree with at least 60 uh, ECTS in uh, law courses. And in addition to that, you need to be able to show your English language proficiency uh, and uh, basic knowledge in mathematics. And for both uh, English language and mathematics, uh, you need to complete the test uh, um, and you need to complete this test successfully. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we require a CV and a motivation letter. Uh, given that the master uh, is a selective program, uh, we select also on the basis of CV and motivation. Do you see any questions? No. Um, then uh, some very important information about the deadlines. So we've learned a bit from experience uh, in communicating with uh, prospective students so far that the deadline of the 1st of April uh, was very tight. So it's difficult for students to register uh, before the time and get all the documents uh, in, in order. And that would be a pity if you couldn't uh, register. Uh, so to really allow you uh, a bit more time to apply to this master, we have uh, um, extended the deadlines uh, to give you maximum flexibility. And this means now that actually the online application for uh, Dutch students is the 1st of July uh, for the students from the EU and the EEA. And that are non-Dutch, it's the 1st of May. And for students outside the EU and EEA, it's also the 1st of May. 
Um, what's important in this respect is that if you apply online, you need to send additional paperwork uh, within two weeks. And in addition to that, uh, you see the, the various deadlines uh, on this sheet uh, for the, uh, that apply. So if you're Dutch, uh, you need to submit your university plan by the 1st of August. The English test you need to pass, uh, show the positive test results also by the 1st of August. And the maths test you need to pass by 15th of July. And for uh, students from the EU and the EEA, it's uh, submit your university diploma for uh, by 15th of May, pass the English test by 1st of June, pass the maths test by 15th May. And for other international students, the university diploma needs to be submitted by 15th May. The English test needs to be passed by 15th May. And the maths test also needs to be passed by 15th May. So this is a bit different uh, than we've communicated it to you before, but this is to really allow you uh, to still apply uh, and to give you a bit more flexibility and a bit more time to get uh, all your documents together. Do we have questions? Yeah. Uh, let me just go back to the previous slide. Okay, where can we take the maths and English tests? Um, that's a good question. I will get back to that in the, in the next slide. So, and how many students will be in the world per year? Um, we are aiming for maximum 100 students, is that yeah. correct, uh, Mark? It's 100 students uh, maximum that we uh, uh, want to take. And uh, also the next question, when will you know if you're accepted? Very important question, but Nick will also come back to that uh, later during this present presentation. Yeah, and there's, I see a few other questions. Um, About uh, the MET level? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you also say a few words I've, about I have this. a special slide yeah. on the maths and English test, so I'll get back to that. Um, maybe about the motivation letter that you need to submit. Um, uh, so we will select on the basis of your interest uh, in finance. Uh, that's one of the selection criteria. So really state in your motivation letter, uh, I think, why you really want to do this program and how it fits in, in your ambitions and what drives you to, to apply for this program. Um, and I'll get, uh, uh, I think I have separate slides on selection. Um, so I hope other questions are answered next. So the selection is, um, well, you need to have a positive test outcome for the maths and English test. Um, and in addition, we select candidates based on the bachelor's study results, the CV and the motivation letter. So it's a combined package. Um, so we look at this, this all. So the better grades you have, uh, uh, the more positive it is. Uh, um, and your motivation letter also, I would say, highlights the achievements you've made in your, in your, uh, in your CV so far and really state also why you think that uh, law and finance is, is the LLM for you. Um, our selection is done as a rolling basis, so this is also different than we communicated before. Uh, we, once you have applied and you've uh, passed your test, uh, we will inform you uh, within a week um, uh, after you've fully completed your application. Uh, so this is a, done on a rolling basis. Um, I can say that we have a lot of interest for the master, so we encourage you also to apply early. Um, but we will let you know as soon as possible whether you're selected. Um, and there's no GPA requirements because we look at the, that's one of the questions I see here, because we look at the total package of, yeah. the, um, uh, yeah. of the application. Um, then English language proficiency. So most students uh, that apply will have to take a proficiency test to demonstrate English language ability. Um, and you can see also on our website uh, uh, the further details on that. The proficiency tests that we accept are TOEFL, IELTS, Cambridge English. And what's important, you have to take action yourself to take the test. And the test capacity actually might be limited, so you should register as soon as possible. Uh, and, and try all three providers to look into the earliest opportunity. However, there is also additional information here. We've also noticed that it sometimes can be difficult to uh, register for these tests. And therefore, we will also provide you with an additional opportunity to take an English test, uh, which will be an online test for which you can also uh, register uh, via our communication channels. Um, so if you apply for the program, you can also select this option. And further information on that uh, English test will follow uh, very shortly, both on our website as well as in our newsletter. Then, um, 
the mathematics test. I was just looking at the screen to see whether there are any further questions. Um, so I'm a lawyer myself and I haven't done mathematics in quite some time. So I can understand if the mathematics preparation test or the mathematics test in its preparation for that uh, can be a bit daunting. Uh, and here I would like to say that the, the level that we uh, the aim for is not uh, uh, very high. Uh, it should, it's a very doable test uh, and it's really the basics uh, of algebra that we, uh, we ask you to do. And you can practice that uh, online via the Khan Academy with Algebra 1. Um, but we do require it because we do not want to make any concessions in the curriculum to the contribution of financial economics. And if you really want to understand financial economics, um, yeah, you need to learn the basics, uh, basic language in which financial e economics uh, speaks, and that is mathematics. So therefore we require an entrance test. Now, how will this test be conducted? Uh, if you apply for the program, you will receive an invitation to do this test online. Uh, we will send you a link uh, and then you can click on it and, and you will um, be able to do the test. Uh, and, and further details uh, on this test will also be provided through our communication channels. Um, and what's important to note here as well is that all mathematics in excess of the entry level will be part of the curriculum. So there's particularly in the first semester, first block, there's a course on uh, financial economics and quantitative methods in which you will uh, really further brush up your mathematical skills uh, needed to understand finance. And I'm just going to go to the next slide. Uh, what's also um, uh, an additional thing that we offer is that we offer uh, preparation materials for the mathematics test. So there will be example tests online, um, but perhaps more importantly, we also provide training free of charge. And that training is both, uh, you can do both physically on site in Amsterdam, and there are three Saturdays uh, in which this training will be offered, March the 3rd, March the 10th and 17th. Um, you can uh, register this also via our website um, and we also provide information about this through our communica other communication channels. And what we also provide is off-site video explanation. So for those unable to come to Amsterdam, we have a video of the training in which uh, a practice test will be fully explained and all the necessary skills that you need to do the mathematics test uh, will also be explained. Um, but um, yeah, this opportunity to do an on-site training is, is a great one, I think. Um, so uh, please register, it's, it's free. Uh, and you can then uh, do this on one of the three Saturdays I mentioned. What do we advise to students? So uh, we would advise you to register yourself for the program uh, at our website. And we would also advise you to register early given the high interest in this master. Um, then complete your test and application documents uh, as soon as possible. But we also advise you to create a fallback option. Uh, given that the master's is a selective program, uh, it might be the case that you won't be selected. And for this, we would advise you to create a fallback option uh, and register yourself for a different program in case uh, you might not be selected. And um, what are the next steps that you then should take? Well, first, uh, uh, we would say apply for the program, uh, and then you will also uh, automatically receive our newsletter. You can sign up for a Facebook group. Uh, you can see here what the uh, URL is. Uh, and if you have any further questions, you can raise them now or uh, by email. Yeah, I saw, I saw a question about uh, uh, why don't you select uh, just based on GPA? Um, it is, uh, Nick already reflected a little bit uh, on that. Um, the GPA, of course, gives an answer to how good you were on the courses that you have followed uh, during your study, but um, it doesn't say anything about, uh, for instance, uh, how good you are uh, and how much experience you have, for instance, in mathematics or in finance. And uh, of course, we do only mathematics in the function of uh, learning finance, but uh, the GPA in itself, if you haven't taken any math or finance courses, uh, doesn't say so much on how uh, well you will be equipped for this uh, program. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nick already said, we look for that reason for the whole package and uh, we uh, have many variables based on which we uh, determine 
whether you are suitable to uh, enter this program. And, um, yeah, probably there are a few other uh, uh, interesting so there's one question, if you're not admitted, can you try again next year? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, e. and uh, if there are any scholarships available for this program? Um, well, not specifically for this program, I think, but the UVA has a disk, has information on the website about scholarships. Yeah. And if you go uh, at the UVA website to that part of the scholarships, you can read there which scholarships are available at the university and uh, hopefully there will be one that uh, will fit you and you will make a chance to, to get in yeah. to the program via the yeah. scholarship. Yeah. Uh, work experience, um, it's all, it, I would say it's an add-on, it's a nice to have work experience in the area but it's not really required uh, to have it. No. Uh, you can enter the program without uh, much hands-on work experience in the area. Um, also an interesting question, are there any internships or career services provided? At the moment we don't have it, but we will certainly start it. Uh, we will uh, uh, get the students in contact with the uh, uh, employers and we have very good contacts as you have seen also with our advisory board with the industry mm -hmm. um, it's also a requirement of uh, uh, the dutch government if you start a study that you uh, will show uh, how many positions are available in the field but also that you have support from uh, the industry so uh, we have close ties to the industry and will certainly develop career uh, services uh, uh, for this program. And then I saw a question also whether we offer pre-sessional English courses. So if I understand it correctly, the question would then be whether we also offer some training options for English, for the English test. Uh, and, and I have to say, we, we don't do that. So we do offer preparation uh, courses for the mathematics, but, but not for English. Um, I can say that for the English tests, there are quite a lot of uh, practice materials around um, that you can consult. On the internet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. on the internet. Um, let's see. Um, is it possible to take the test a year in advance? In general, we could say yes. But uh, there is a limitation on the val val uh, validity of the tests. Uh, uh, many of the English tests have a val uh, validity of about two years. Yeah. Uh, so you have then to enter the program within two years after that you have successfully completed uh, the test. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Are for the mathematics tests, it's, it's difficult to take it before because we only send the mathematics test to people that already have applied uh, to the program. Um, if there are only limited spaces and you receive admission or not within a week, early birds have an advantage. This is strange. Yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> in, in some sense, you're right. On the other hand, we want to give people also certainty about that they are accepted by the program. And if you have to wait a very long time, our experience is that that is very negative. People start to look around for other programs and that is also not what we want. So for that reason, we decided to uh, uh, give a quick follow-up if people admit and uh, we are in the selection committee. If we think this is a good uh, uh, student for the program, yeah. we will, uh, as soon as possible, let the student know that he is accepted uh, for the program. Yeah. And then there's a, uh, a question about the courses, the curriculum. Um, it looks like there will be, uh, the focus will be more on the finance part rather than the law part. Uh, or is this a wrong assumption? Um, so I think the, the, um, the program is really 50-50. So the idea of the program is that the different courses uh, 
really both relate to law and economics and that for each law course there's also uh, a course taught by the business school and that you look at uh, similar problems um, from both the economic and the legal angle. And an example of that is the first uh, block, for example, where you will learn business organizations law and corporate finance law from a more legal perspective. And at the same time, you will also uh, get a course in financial economics, quantitative methods and in accounting. Um, and that is really offers you both sides of, um, of the fields, both from a, from a legal perspective and an economic perspective. Yeah. And perhaps it's good to say that that uh, also some of our legal professors are really uh, very versatile in uh, economics. Um, so to give one example, Marcel Peters, who's a professor of derivatives law as a lawyer, also has a PhD degree in economics uh, and is able to really integrate uh, the two perspectives in his in his own yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, I find another uh, interesting question: To what extent will you need math? Uh, we don't learn people math. Uh, for the purpose of learning math, we only learn people math in the function of uh, understanding basic economic principles. And uh, for instance, in uh, merger and acquisitions, if you will become a corporate lawyer, uh, we think you need to know something about valuation, valuation of assets. What is the value of a certain asset? So for that type of topic, we learn uh, mm -hmm. the students the mathematics that you need for valuation. And uh, similar for other type of uh, uh, economic issues that are important for lawyers, we only learn those uh, 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 mathematical topics that are relevant for understanding the economics in the program. And maybe you, you can also speak from experience, uh, right? That this is a very valuable assets for, uh, yeah. for corporate lawyers. Yeah, now that, that was uh, when I worked at, uh, uh, at the law firm in the Netherlands, one of the complaints of the clients of the law firm mm. that, uh, uh, yeah, the understanding of uh, economics in, for instance, contracts by the lawyers could be better. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's very useful to obtain this knowledge. Yeah. Um, uh, another question I see from Alexander Capatana about the amount of hours teaching a week. Um, so there will be a minimum of 10 hours teaching a week. Most courses have uh, uh, a two-hour lecture and a three-hour interactive, uh, more interactive seminar. Um, in some blocks there will be more teaching uh, and then if, um, most courses will have various uh, um, uh, interactive modules as well, um, such as uh, presentations, uh, uh, paper writing uh, is also part of it, uh, and various exam forms. Yeah, I see also an interesting question. Uh, there are two other masters in the Netherlands that also focus on financial law. Mm -hmm. Financieel recht in Leiden and the masters law, markets and behavior. How does the law and finance master di distinguish itself in this respect? Of course, when we compose this uh, program, uh, this program in Leiden also started or was underway and we studied very well uh, the, pro, the, the two programs and the differences uh, between our program and, that pro, and the two other programs. The Financiële Recht, Leiden University, I think it's a very good university and uh, very uh, well respected colleagues, but Leiden University doesn't have a formal economics department and business school. And uh, we bring in, in this program, really the combination mm -hmm. between people from business economics side on one hand and the law school on the other hand, uh, teaching both in the program, which is different from that people from a law, just a law school are teaching. It's really the combination uh, here. And uh, that uh, distinguishes us for, for the one part and uh, law markets and behavior has also aspects of our uh, program, but it is uh, more general. This, our program mm -hmm. focuses more on uh, really the finance side uh, and the law side. Uh, so that's more focused on really learning about uh, finance and financial transactions. 
Yeah. Let's see whether we'll find other questions. I don't see many other questions uh, right now popping up that we haven't answered yet. Uh, so we'll probably wait one or two more minutes. And if no more questions yeah. arrive, then we will end this. And of course, you could always ask us per email uh, your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you have more private questions about your personal situation, uh, we have the staff that is, will answer your question. And if needed, we will contact you and discuss your case uh, uh, and try to, to help out. Um, yeah, I don't see uh, many more questions appearing. So thank you very much for your attendance. Oh, there's, ah, uh, there's uh, one. Post. <laughs> uh, uh, this post bachelor are popular to follow before law and finance. Probably, Nick, you could say a few words about that. Uh, well, what type of bachelors then, I guess, would be... A yeah, yeah, of course, it's the uh, many legal uh, 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 bachelors, yeah. uh, especially focusing on uh, uh, corporate law, but also uh, uh, in other law areas, because uh, my experience is that it's not only interesting for corporate lawyers' uh, uh, finance knowledge, but also uh, financial transactions appear in many other areas uh, where the law uh, uh, and law where the law applies. So it's not only for corporate lawyers, yeah. um, but also there are opportunities for other people, like people in Amsterdam that did PPLE or uh, the University College, provided that they have the 60 EC of yeah. uh, legal courses that can enter the program. So it's not only for people that have done the law school. Although yeah. we expect uh, the majority of people entering this program will have a law background. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If no further questions uh, uh, are on the. Oh, there's screen. another one. <laughs> uh, so, this is a question about international students uh, that did a bachelor abroad uh, and whether they have access to the Dutch bar after completing this LLM program. Um, so that is not the case. Um, for To qualify for the Dutch bar, um, you need to, to have what we call an Nederland civil effect, and that requires a full uh, Dutch uh, bachelor in law. Uh, so this, the master itself uh, does not provide you access to civil effect. If you have a Dutch bachelor in law and you do the master in law and finance, you will uh, qualify for the bar. But for international students who did a bachelor abroad, uh, it's more difficult. Yeah. yeah, and it may be that you qualify for admission to the bar in your local country, but that depends very much on the rules in your uh, country. Yeah, yeah, and that's where you're uh, from. For us, yeah. that's difficult to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the curriculum doesn't explicitly elaborate on very new financial instruments like blockchain. Uh, will but will this nevertheless be discussed? At the, when we uh, designed uh, the program, there were, of course, already blockchains and uh, digital currencies. Uh, there is, at the moment, not an explicit course on it, uh, but we will cover these modern topics and we're thinking about electives uh, about the topic. So we will certainly cover uh, this, uh, these topics as well. And we have very good experts in the area. Uh, I think uh, today even uh, there is a, a seminar organized by the Amsterdam Center for Law and Economics on blockchain and fintech. Um, and yeah. the, the law school has quite a big project, research project on blockchain. Yeah, so we have a lot of knowledge internally about it and we will certainly also include that in our uh, curriculum uh, at the moment, not as a fixed part of it, but as electives that is possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, does the university provide any class to students to learn Dutch? Uh, if you look to the UVA website, if you search there, you will find uh, the opportunities to take Dutch classes at the university. There, there are uh, opportunities, possibilities to, uh, to take Dutch classes uh, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yeah. uh, hope to see you in Amsterdam to follow this uh, Masters. Yeah, bye bye. Exactly. Bye.